it's something special, just done all the hard work the generations have put in before to make this possible. Um, you know, there's been a lot of hard times uh, trying to make it survive and all those things, but uh, through just perseverance and and yeah, thinking outside the box, you know, uh, it's, we're blessed. Yeah, this is just part of my soul. I fell in love with this mountain as a kid, so I jumped on the opportunity to be able to come back up into the Little Horn, where I grew up. I know, this is just the idea that you're out there every day and you're doing it because you love it. It's not because you're making money. It's not because somebody wants you to. I mean, it's... It's, you're doing it because it's something that you just feel like you have to do. You know, I, honestly, I think what makes it work so well is, hell, the Kearns family, they, they pour their life into this. This is, this is their bread and butter. This is, hell, without these drives, I wouldn't even have wages throughout the year. The 70s were brutal on the family operation uh, all over the United States. We realized we had to figure out another way to generate income or get out of the cow business. It was just that simple. And, and uh, so we started the cow drive. When we first started, heavens, people would call, uh, we did a little bit of print advertising, would call in the spring of the year, we would send out a card with our dates on it, postcards. We were hand addressing about 3,000 and sticking them in the mail and whatnot. Of course, a bunch of cowboys, hell, we didn't know where to advertise or who to talk to or how to go about it. And uh, of course the internet, then things started to pick up because all of a sudden we had worldwide exposure. We've been doing this close to 30 years and it's a word of mouth thing now. We do six trips a year. Um, and uh, it, it's our main, it, it's our gravy, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's what makes our land payment every year, um, is the cattle drives. And had these people not started coming and doing this, um, we, we would have probably been out of the cow business a long time ago. Sheridan is cowboy country, but have you ever wondered where those cowboys come from? And is it possible to become a cowboy, or is it something that you're born with? An inherent sensibility to understand the land and all the things that come with it. The Kearns family have been ranching and running cattle in Wyoming for generations, and we've turned to them for answers and for a look at Western life at its most raw and authentic. I'm Sean Parker, and this is a very special episode of The Backyard. So we have no clue where we're going. We followed the packing directions. We did, to a uh, T. And to a T, definitely to a T. But that's that's like all we know. Which that's is how we, we want it. That's how we want it. And makes it very exciting. We know nothing about what we're in for here. We know that we're coming back to town Thursday-ish. Um, a lot of these folks just rolled into Wyoming this morning. I think some of them even landed in Billings very early today. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty stoked. Nobody knows what to expect. Unless some people read more details on the website. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> <I think so. laughs> there were clear instructions. <laughs> we uh, just arrived somewhere on the mountain. What do we call this? Base camp? Start camp? Sure, yeah. Base camp. Base camp. Um, a lot of horses, a lot of people. This is going to be really exciting. From all over the country. Uh, big group. Huge group. What is it? It'll make our, our failures blend in a little better. <laughs> Start out with, I of course want to thank all of you for joining us this week. Um, we are in the cow business today because you people are involved in our ranch operation. And uh, we started this about 30 years ago because it was either get out of the cow business or figure out some way to generate additional revenue. Today is primarily just a day where we're gonna get saddles adjusted. We'll do some horse swaps as we go and whatnot. Don't anybody be offended if we have to move two or three people to get one person on a horse that we think will make that an enjoyable week for them. Because throughout the week, horses will get sore. So the horse you might have ridden the first two days you're going to get told you're on a different horse today and that's all we're going to say about it and so don't anybody take it personally because it's not uh because uh, if, if you take it personally we'll take the horse away from you and you put your tennis shoes on and run so uh, it evens things out very quickly hey Pecos, how you doing first step we've uh, met our horses six moons he has a lot of tricks i heard yeah very famous for that you ever take it off any sweet jumps did you meet your horse i did What's his name? Apollo. Apollo? Yeah. Oh, all right. Very sweet boy. Here's the girl or boy. God of light. Uh, I didn't check. He's going to come in, grab the bit, and your thumb and your middle finger are going to be on the inside 
and your index finger is going to be on the outside. This gives you optimal control of that bit. Looking good, dude. Alright, and then this guy. Just try it. My turn. I'm going to hand the camera to Max here. Let's go in his mouth first. Yep. But keep your hand over. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just pulling his lips. <laughs> <laughs> The white chaps, the white gloves, and is there a white jacket? You look good. That's right. It's all matters. <laughs> uh, so we got shown some chaps. He's like a white knight, like a rhinestone cowboy. So I think we're cowboyed up. Is we're saddled up. Saddled up. Bridled. Bridled. We have no idea where we're going, but we know no. there are 628 pair of cows out there. <sighs> and a cow calf pair. That's what we're hearing. How many are you going to take? 615. Cool, so that leaves 13? Th yes. Okay, cool. I can, I can handle leave a 13. Few. Leave a few. But we got a good group of people, eager beavers. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see. Pretty excited. See people so excited to be in Wyoming. That's oh, exciting yeah. for me and yeah. for Max and Jeff. The bighorns are something incredible, and uh, giving people the opportunity to experience that from a horse uh, is, is even better. I think getting out in nature where there's not as much noise going on gives people the opportunity to reflect think about things, prioritize in life what's important, but it still, it still has a mission, it still has a goal. I mean, at the end of the day, we gotta get these cows to where they need to be. Adventure seekers are our primary target. This is a high adventure trip, and if, if people are not seeking an adventure, they're not gonna be happy here. Uh, if somebody's looking for a vacation, uh, they're better off going to uh, a dude ranch, and that's not what we are. One, two, three. What do you think, Max? Happy camper. So is Pecos here? My horse wanted me Free to be in this shot. Right <laughs> Could you get out of my way? I'm trying to get in this shot. Do you see what he does? How many hours in are we, Sean? We are four hours and 15 minutes in on this expedition. Flew by. Flew by. You a cowboy yet? Close. Do you just know? Do you know when you know? Uh, I think that's how it works, but I personally do not know. I don't know. Neither do you. No, so we are uh, about to saddle up and head to some real steep country here. And we've got some nice horses. I love Six Moons. He has bitten four other horses and tried to bite Max twice. If he was a human being, he'd be a serial killer. Uh, Pecos, my horse, is an absolute sweetheart. Let's ride. We're gonna cross the river. We made it to camp on night one. We came down Screamers Hill. Um, legit, definitely named because you're going about 90 degrees straight down. I didn't have a, a ruler or an abacus or anything to measure it, but it was it was extremely severe. And, uh, 90 we degrees at 90 miles an hour. 90 degrees, 90 miles an hour. But this is amazing. Some country we've never seen. We just let the horses free. Uh, it's chow time. We fill up on some chow. And also, we're gonna look for the drone that Jeff crashed because there's some legit footage on that. Gosh, that's a brontosaurus. Thank you. Thank you. Move some miles today. 13, 13 plus. I think we deserve this. Really. I mean, I did vir virtually nothing. I mean, I just sat there on the horse all day. It was great. It's a lot different. You know, I thought the whole time about how different that is when you're backpacking or, or hiking. Mm -hmm. 13 miles will take it out of you, but that was great. Did you sleep well? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I slept alright. My bed was like a little, I could have moved it. It was like a little going down the slope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I had to wake up and adjust. The most important part <laughs> of any so cattle drive is right now, and this is happening. It's the breakfast bell. Oh, okay. <laughs> breakfast! We got flapjacks, bacon, eggs, all the good stuff. We're gonna fuel up, we're gonna go get some cows. This is a dying way of life. And so to be a part of a family that is continuing this tradition, it's documenting something really special. Our family has grazed this for over a hundred years. So we're grazing the same terrain, we're riding the same trails, we're camping and cooking the same way. And to find people that love this lifestyle and are passionate about sharing it with others and advocating for this lifestyle, you can't find it anywhere else. Pretty good day. 
Amazing day. First time we uh, got out and got to chase cattle. And yeah. I tell you what, that's different. That is not like humping down the trail. Uh -huh. Even the steepest trail uh -huh. pales in comparison yeah. to getting on that horse and trying to push cattle through the brush. Right. It's hard, but but with a little bit of instruction from them, you can actually do it. You know, with with not very much riding experience, you can actually move cattle and be functional on this cattle drive, which is just the coolest thing. It's amazing being out here with the Kearns family. They're, they're a tight-knit group, and, and seeing oh, yeah. how close they are is, is cool because yeah. it, it makes you want to work hard to, to yeah. do what we need to do. My family is a very tight-knit family, and it's because of the lifestyle that we lead. I think people see that and they feel that. It's phenomenal to be able to um, have such a tight family and being able to work with my dad and my little brother so well. I rely on my little brother a lot. He relies on me a lot to pick up where each of us have our shortcomings on the ranch. We, we moved cows six miles um, to the north today. That's wild to think. Yeah. We pushed them all that way, yeah. hundreds of these things. And it was neat watching the dogs run them, watching the, the cowboys run them. Oh, it's a well-oiled machine. You know, we were talking to them earlier about who, who's your target market, you know, who, who do you like to come out? And it's all sorts of people, but most importantly, adventure seekers, because it really is, I mean, it's, it's, it's legit. Adventure. It's not It's not an easy thing to do. No, when you think about, hey, we live in Wyoming, this will be a cakewalk yeah. for us, no, yeah. no, no. It's not, but, it's and, not a cakewalk for anybody. And that's what's so rewarding about it, too, yeah. is that you actually do something. It's difficult, and you feel good about it. Tomorrow, we're going to bring it back towards camp, and Wednesday, we're going to make the big push out here. So, up Screamer Hill. Up Screamer Hill. <laughs> All right, let's get some shut-eye. we got All some right. cows to move. Hey, yeah. cow folks. So uh, we are getting ready to ride out on day three here. We're gonna um, go up into the timber and fish some more cows out, over. Copy that. I'm gonna do that shh noise even though the radio does shh over. I'm leaving. <laughs> you can't leave, I know you're on 128. Sean, I seem to be breaking up. I, uh, I don't know, the service must be pretty poor out here. I'll see you later, man, I'll see you at the top of the hill. I'm, he's on channel 128 and he can't get off. take Max and I out on these horses. Who did you think had a better chance to become a cowboy by week seven? <laughs> well, that's easy, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> not a single one of you. <laughs> he has no preconceived notions. He doesn't think he knows anything. So he's the easiest to mold. <laughs> How's that for a political answer? I guess, I guess the right answer should be all three of you are gonna be phenomenal. <laughs> Away! Bandy! Bandy! Away! Away! Push up! Push up! Push up! Oh, oh, she found a bunch more. Push up! Push up! Push up! Bandy! Bandy! Come here, Bandy! Taylor, do you want to tell us what you just had Bindi do? <clears throat> oh, we brought this group of cows in here and uh, it takes a little while for the cows and the calves to pair back up. Yeah. It's called mothering up. And uh, so we had a couple of those calves starting to come back because they hadn't found their mothers yet. So I sent the dog out there and had her push those calves back over to the herd so that they'll find their mother. <laughs> that was awesome. Come on, Bindi. This life is a risk. This job is a risk. And I think that's one of the things people appreciate about it is it's reality. Growing up ranching, I mean, that is adversity. I mean, because every day there's some challenge you didn't expect. I grew up, you know, chasing cows around since I was, hell, four or five years old. There's something about being on this mountain, uh, the challenges of the mountains and the cattle, and it's, 
It's just something that I've fallen in love with. You bring 300 pair in and they're all paired up and happy and they're single file going up that mountain and they're not a big old cluster. I mean, there's a, there's a sense of accomplishment there. Because when's the last time you were on a horse going down a hill like this? I mean, chasing a damn cow because he was going the wrong way. <laughs> You're gonna remember that shit. <laughs> We don't baby or coddle these people. If it's snowing, it doesn't change it. The ground is slick, it doesn't change it. And then at the end of the week, they realize that they've accomplished something that not very many people have done. The cattle drives give us an opportunity to share that with other people and gives them an opportunity to go back home and, and talk to people about their experience and so that they can help spread to the rest of the country what it is that ranchers stand for and what they do. Aren't yeah. you glad he's not three? <laughs> See how strong they are? That's why we hate to do them out in the hills out there because the footing's bad. All right, we got a stake until I get the front neck rope off. Okay. Okay, Robert, I need you to move your. There we go. Okay, now, Robert, go ahead and get up, get out of the way. Sean, yep. out of the way because we're going to be able to turn him loose. Good game, guys. Good game. <laughs> Touchdown, Cowboys! My dad brought me out as a guest when I was 18. Um, but we grew up backpacking and riding horses together, so this is like a culmination of all of those things. Not only was the scenery amazing and the food, but it was the family that brought us back the following year. And actually, fun fact, Taylor's mom came up to me at the end of that first trip and said, I really want you to meet my youngest son. Um, and she told him, I met your next girlfriend. <laughs> well, she was right. When we came out the following August, um, Taylor and I met and it was instant. Apparently it's in my blood. <laughs> It's always been my passion, my love, um, the cows and the horses, and, and uh, um, leaving just made me realize how much I, I loved it, you know, and uh, yeah. There's a lot of different aspects of it that are really rewarding. One aspect is educating the public about public grazing, um, what it is like to, to cowboy, um, and then the other part is when we change people's lives for the positive. We'll have people years down the road send us an email or something like that and say, you changed my life, thank you so much. Uh, we got one this last spring, a uh, guy, guy's dying, and he uh, came out in I think 2003 maybe, and he sent us an email and just said, I've never forgotten that experience, thank you so much. You know, we've had uh, fathers and sons, fathers and daughters come that were kind of estranged and didn't get along very well and they come out and do this trip for the week and it rekindles, rebuilds a relationship. So it's, the helping people is the most uh, amazing part of it. Well, that was one of the singularly most amazing experiences of my life. Me too. You know, unbelievably really? spectacular. Honestly. Not just being out on the horse all day, but that sense of community and camaraderie. The people. That is right. created by uh, the experience. And the family are a bunch of amazing people. Mm -hmm. um, all in all spectacular. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think I am a cowboy, but... Uh, We're not. I think it's honestly the most rugged thing you can do in Wyoming. You know, I'd in a, say In so. a state known for its rugged, Authenticity. There's nothing yeah. more rugged than being on horseback. Totally. Yeah. Um, it's the most Wyoming thing you can do in Wyoming. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know if you remember this time on the cattle drive, but I wrestled a bull by yourself. They they've made movies about guys who do that, and if there had been a crew there, I think we would have seen the sequel. We have footage of that. There was, I mean, it wasn't so necessarily. You can't blow it too out of proportion because it's all recorded. It wasn't necessarily by myself. I mean, I was the third or fourth guy in, <laughs> but without me, they wouldn't have wrestled that bull. Okay. Noted. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, I want to go back. It, uh, it's one of the best things I've ever done in Wyoming, you know. I, and I love a lot of the attractions here. It's not to take anything away from 
say Eaton's Ranch or Canyon. I mean, shoot, we got married at Eaton's. It's one of the greatest uh, Not places. Us. Not us. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the other person I spent a lot of time. <laughs> We, uh, you know, we got married out there, and it's one of the other phenomenal experiences yeah. the state yeah. has to offer anytime you get to go out yeah. and um, hang out and play cowboy at a dude ranch. But there's a difference between playing cowboy and being a cowboy yeah. for a week. Oh yeah. T to be fair, we we did very little on the cattle drive. I mean, you you're right, but we were in there. Yeah. We were there, and and that's what I love about it too is that they they don't sugarcoat anything. They don't make it easy on you. Yeah. That's the point of the trip, you yeah. know. You're going to do it like we do it, and like it's been done for a couple hundred years. Right, I think on the first day, Taylor said, well, I hope you guys didn't lie in your application form. Yeah. And that was kind of an eye-opener when you're uh, yep. barreling down a 30-degree 30 30 slope. So what do you want people to take away from this, from, from our experience with the Kearns on the cattle drive? I think for me, is that this stuff still exists, you know, and especially in Wyoming. I mean, it's actually, it, this is like fairy tale stuff. It's movies, you know. And this is real. It's that the Kearns would be doing this. The only reason they have guests is because the market, you know, they couldn't survive the market without having guests. But they would be doing this stuff every day, all the time, if uh, for no thanks, you know, for no reason other than the fact that they love it and it's what they do and it's a part of it. You know? And that's really inspiring. It's a really beautiful thing. It's a good point. You know, for me, I would say, um, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. And I think that extends to a lot of the adventures we had on this this uh, season of the backyard. The best um, experiences we had in the cattle drive absolutely is tops of this season. Um, in terms of uh, stepping out of the comfort zone is that when you come to Wyoming, um, you can make this as rugged and raw as you want it to be. And that's what we did, you know, right here. We were never really more than, what, 50, 60 miles from where we, we sleep at night at home. But it was a totally different world. We put ourselves out there. Uh, we challenged ourselves. I mean, shoot, Jeff was on his on a horse for the third time. You know, yeah. he's like, "Let's do this. We'll yeah. go for a week on horseback, yeah. racing down the hill, man. Racing down the hill with yeah. camera gear, looking yeah. through a viewfinder. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And all those people too. They were doing the same yeah. thing. You know, you had a couple people that were extremely good horsemen, but you had some people that were out there like, "Hey, my daughter's always wanted to do this. Let's just go ride." Yeah. And and that's wild stuff. And uh, everybody persevered, and they were better for it. Uh, and I think that's maybe the best lesson about Wyoming is, is come and do something that you've never done. I mean, yeah. why, why come all the way out here? It's hard to get to. Yeah, yeah right. We're, we're isolated. Um, it's a world away from any big city in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a completely different world. And I, I'm always going to be grateful for the experience and, and being able oh, to yeah. do it. Um, wish I'd become a cowboy, but uh, there's always next year. There's always next year.